Uh, so let's try to get started now and people can come in as we go uh, just because there's a lot in this slideshow and I want to make sure everyone has time for questions. So this is a KPI framework to make your next Drupal migration a success and I am Nick Pistone. Uh, this talk is for anyone who uses data to measure the success of their projects including but not limited to Drupal migrations or anyone who wants to learn how to do that. And if that's not you, don't leave now. It'll be too obvious and everyone will see you and look <laughs> at you. So wait a few minutes and act like you're getting up, going to the bathroom, getting a drink, whatever, and I won't call you out. Uh, I appreciate all of you deciding to come to this talk when there are so many great presentations to choose from. My goal for this presentation is for each one of you to come away with a better understanding of how KPIs can not only measure project success, but also directly contribute to it as well. And I'll be giving each of you a framework that you can take with you to create KPIs that lead to a clear understanding of success and how to improve on your results. <coughs> okay, whoops. Uh, so a little bit about me. Here's a photo of me in Peru this summer. I'm the digital marketing analytics lead at Bixel, and I've been at Bixel for four years and I've had the pleasure of seeing it grow from 75 employees up to 250. Our mission at Bixel is to improve people's lives through human-centered design strategies and transformative technologies. And a little bit more about me. Uh, so the first photo here is in Cappadocia, Turkey. I love to travel and my go-to photo pose is to find the tallest thing I can find and stay on top of it. So that's <laughs> what I'm doing here. Um, then the next picture is our digital marketing analytics team at an SEO conference in Portland from this summer. Uh, and here we have my dog, Bruce. He lives with my family in Pennsylvania, but as you can see, we're pretty good buds. And then we have some tomatoes from my garden. Uh, I love to grow things and be able to eat those things. And as an Italian-American, I love making pasta sauce, so I focused in on tomato production this year. All right, and I created my first data visualization when I was about 10 years old. It wasn't for a school assignment. I didn't present it to anyone or get a grade. I just had a problem that I wanted to solve. It was Halloween, right around the year 2000 and I had just come home from trick-or-treating with over a hundred pieces of candy stuffed into a pillowcase. I spread it all out on the table and looked it over trying to decide which pieces to eat first. I had a lot of different types of candy, but there were only a few pieces of each type. I saw two paths laid out in front of me. I could either go straight for my favorites and eat all the best candies first, or I could space them out in between less desirable candies to savor the experience as long as possible. So I'd like to do a quick poll. So I want to see everyone with your hand up in the air and hold up one finger if you prefer to go straight for your favorite candies and put up two fingers if you like to uh, eat your favorite candies last. So ones or twos. Okay, interesting. We've got only two twos and everyone else is ones. All right. So I'm in group two. Uh, my goal is to enjoy my candy for as long as possible. So I would ration out the best candy to eat it gradually throughout the first weeks of November. So to help me achieve my goal, I grabbed a blank piece of paper and I drew out two columns and a whole bunch of rows. And the lines weren't very straight and I think I had to use a few pages to fit all of the data, but it did the job. It looked something like this, just a little sample. Um, so you've got the names, name of the candy, and the number of pieces, which I used tally marks to count so that I could add marks as I counted and erase marks as I ate the candy. While this is only a replica of my original chart, I do remember always getting a lot of Snickers and Milky Way, which for me is kind of a mid-tier candy. It's not my <laughs> favorite, um, but I will eat it. Uh, Hershey's, Reese's, and Twizzlers, are all in the second tier. And then finally, Three Musketeers is my favorite. It was my favorite at the time, for sure. Um, and I actually brought some with me, as you can see. So <laughs> at the end, don't be shy. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of this whole bag, because I have like another bag about the size of home. Um, 
and for obvious reasons, I did not bring in any Three Musketeers for y'all, so sorry. Um, but there are some good ones in there. So now, over 20 years later, and with eight years of experience in, as a data analyst, this is still my favorite data visualization I've ever made. It didn't have any special diagrams or functionality, but it did exactly what I needed it to do. It was aligned with my goals. If I had just counted the total number of pieces or measured by weight, I wouldn't have known how many Three Musketeers I could eat. I needed to break out the count by the type of candy. Uh, secondly, it told the truth in a simple way. It gave me an accurate count of candy, and as long as I remembered to erase tally marks when I ate candy and protected my stash from my little sister, my data remained accurate and useful. And it can be tempting to try to make fancy, impressive dashboards that tell clients what they want to hear. But if we aren't telling the truth and delivering it in a way that is easy to understand, our projects won't meet their goals. And finally, my first data visualization pro provided me with a clear action. Each day I could look at my chart, see which candies I had a surplus of, and decide how many I wanted to eat without fear of running out. I've seen many dashboards, including ones that I've created, that provide a lot of interesting visuals without leading to a clear decision or helping you understand what to do with that data. In the end, the right metrics presented simply and accurately helped me extend my Halloween candy and I got to eat one of each of my favorites instead of being stuck with a bag full of Snickers at the end. Sorry to the Snickers fans out there, I know I got a few. Before a witness testifies in court, they are sworn to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Their testimony can have a powerful impact in shaping the opinions of the jury and ultimately whether a person goes to prison or walks free. As analysts, the way that we present data and what we choose to share and omit can and should have a powerful impact on the final product that we are building. The testimony that we share through data will impact millions of people's lives. Our work may seem small at times, but it affects the way people access healthcare, their retirement, their businesses, and their ability to vote. So it's important that through our KPIs, we deliver the truth, our data is accurate and people can understand it easily, the whole truth, we include the good and the bad so that we can learn and improve, and nothing but the truth. Our KPIs should be relevant. We leave out anything extra that isn't aligned with our goals. I had more bullets on that one, but I realized they were extra, so I cut them out. <laughs> Nothing but the truth is probably the hardest one because people will almost never ask you to take something off a dashboard once it's there. But, they, but the more charts and numbers we put in front of people, the less time and focus they will have to understand the most important information. So here's a little trick. If you have a monthly report with a chart or table on it that no one has asked about or mentioned in a while, just delete it and see if anyone notices. 99 times out of 100, <laughs> they won't notice, and the report will be more focused and easier to understand as a result. I've done that a lot of times. All right, and what we've all been waiting for, the KPI framework. After creating KPIs for several projects, I realized that my process involved a lot of going back and forth. I would come up with a KPI, then ask about the goals and the strategy, then go back to the KPIs, and after I got my nice list of KPIs, I went to build a dashboard and realized that the data I wanted to include didn't always align with the KPIs I had spent so much time creating. Has anyone ever experienced this? <coughs> yeah, a few people, not just me. Happened to me a lot of times. Um, and it's totally fine for KPIs to evolve over time. Mine always do. But I found that developing this framework not only made my KPIs better and easier to create, but it also helped the entire team understand the goals and strategy of the project better. As you and your team work through each column in this template, you get more specific and measurable, and it brings to light questions that otherwise might not have been addressed. So even though it takes some time and effort, there's really a net positive impact for the team in going through this exercise. On my latest project, our client product owner spent a lot of time working on the goals, and I felt a little bad that I was taking up so much of his time. But ultimately, I think everyone enjoyed the experience, 
and we refer back to the document throughout the project whenever we run into new questions. So let's try an example. What is the goal of this talk? Attendees will create KPIs on their projects that are true, balanced, and relevant to goals. Usually we'll have three to five goals, but we'll start with just one. And it might surprise you, but we don't need the goal to be measurable. That's what the KPIs are for. It should describe what you want your project to accomplish, and it can be a little broad. Let's say you're working on a Medicare site. Your goals might include something very concrete, like users enrolling in Medicare, as well as something less measurable, like users learning about the enrollment process. So at this stage, you want to think broadly and not worry about what's measurable. We don't want to limit ourselves and then end up with KPIs that don't tell the full story. Our second column is strategy. Knowing how our team plans to achieve our goals helps us create a narrative of what happened that led, to, led us to success or failure. Either way, if we don't know what caused it, we can't get better. So here I have three strategies that I'm using to help you create KPIs that are true, balanced, and relevant. By outlining these three strategies, I can evaluate each of them to get a better picture of how I can replicate my success or learn from my failures. So I'm providing a template which I will share with anyone who emails me. My email is going to be at the end. And I really do hope people will reach out and use this template. Um, so here what I'm evaluating is maybe the driving factor is having a resource with step-by-step -step instructions. Another way I'm trying to achieve this goal is with this walkthrough. And there's going to be another example after this. So maybe people learn best through guided examples. And in perhaps my boldest strategy of the day, I've told a few jokes that will hopefully help everyone stay awake and pay attention. So maybe my template was great, maybe my examples were perfect, but my delivery was off and my audience wasn't paying attention. So now I have three potential driving factors and I'm going to come up with a more specific hypothesis with each one, for each one, that can be confirmed through data. So you'll see that these hypotheses are more detailed and they make some assumptions. It's basically why I think my strategy will work. And while it might be humbling if our hypothesis is not validated by the data, it will also lead us to re-examine our assumptions and consider new points of view, new ways to understand why something happened. So my hypothesis A is that having a practical tool to use will reduce barriers and lead to more attendees applying the framework. So the theory that I'm testing here is that maybe some attendees would understand the framework, but some barriers such as time or energy or technology would keep them from creating their own. In hypothesis B, my theory is that showing an example improves understanding. And so these KPIs will be about how much you all understand what I'm saying. And hypothesis C says that those who are engaged will pay more attention and learn more. So let's check out the KPIs I've come up with to try to measure this the best I can. So up top we have attendee self-reports of using the framework. I really do hope so that some of you will email me and let me know if you're using this framework. And now that I put in the KPIs, you have to do it. <laughs> For strategy B, showing an example, we have two KPIs. Number two, I'm looking around to see how many people have a confused look on their face. I used to teach second grade, so this was a KPI I relied on a lot. Uh, <laughs> Right now, it looks like we're, we're at a pretty low level, so that's good. Uh, number three, we're going to do an example together after this, and that's going to give me a better idea of how well everyone understands. And finally, KPIs four, five, and six, using laughter volume, number of laughs, and the total time of attendees sleeping during my talk to determine <laughs> how successful I was in keeping people engaged. So. We can have some KPIs that are inversely correlated with success as well. Some that we want to be low, some that we want to be high. Um, so sometimes I include an additional column about how to interpret the data and what benchmarks are good and bad. For this one, I wanted to keep it kind of simple, so I just have these four. And you'll notice a few things about these KPIs. First off, they're not perfect, 
without users telling us, we don't always know exactly why someone chose to engage with us or not engage or what it was that really made them understand. <clears throat> Sometimes we have to get creative and do our best to paint as much of the picture as possible. And part of being agile is knowing that we're not done. We can take what we learned from these KPIs and come up with new strategies and hypotheses to test and continuously reveal a fuller picture of the truth. So let's review. Good KPIs are true, balanced, and relevant. Whether you're using custom events or just using Google Analytics out of the box, you need to do quality assurance testing to make sure that you understand what each metric means and that the data collected is accurate. And then once you get the data, take a step back and try to remove any personal feelings you have about the project and your team and interpret the data as objectively as you can. That leads us right into number two, KPIs that are balanced. As you're evaluating your hypothesis, ask yourself what else could have caused this change? This approach helps us see clear opportunities for improvement. When we fail and when we succeed, we can own it and replicate it. Finally, our KPIs should be relevant to our goals. You'll notice that I didn't have a KPI about how many people attended this talk because my goal was for people to use the KPI framework. I'm curious about it and it might be a good fun fact to tell my parents, but ultimately it's not relevant to my goal. All right, let's do an example together. So our example is a website redesign and migration uh, from an international development website and the primary thing that it has are downloadable resources. Uh, those are organized by topic and the audience is international development professionals who are organized in mainly focused in key regions and we just migrated this website from Drupal 10 and the information architecture was redesigned. That's the project that we're working on and so we're creating KPIs for this project. I came up with a couple goals to get us started. Make the resources easier to find and engage users from key regions. So let's try putting this into our template. So I filled out the first row for us. Our goal is to make resources easier to find. One way we plan to do that is by creating a resources landing page with a search functionality. And our hypothesis is that users who couldn't find the resources before will now be able to find them through search. So we're assuming that there are some people who wanted to find specific resources before and just couldn't find them. And we're hypothesizing that those people will use our new search functionality to do so. So a couple of KPIs I came up with to measure this are the number of sessions that have both a search event, someone used the search functionality, and a resource download. So it's not that just people are using the search or that people are downloading resources, but they're doing both of those things in the same visit. And then just comparing the number of resource downloads before and after the redesign. If that number is relatively the same, then maybe the people who are using the search would have found the resources anyway using a different method. Whenever we give users new ways to do something, we should always be looking to see if we're impacting the total number of actions or if we're just diverting the same amount of actions from one place to another. Now I want to get some audience participation. I came up with a second strategy and hypothesis, but I'd like for you all to come up with a couple of KPIs. So you can kind of talk to people in front and around you. Uh, our second strategy is to redesign the navigation to make it easier for users to get from the topic pages to specific related resources. And my hypothesis is that users who are reading about a topic will be more likely to click on resources related to that topic. So what data should we collect to figure out if this hypothesis is true? So you can take a minute or two to kind of think, talk to your neighbor, um, and then let me know what you think. What is it? What was that? Uh, time in a time on page. Yeah, that could be a good one. I Number would like to write on this, but I don't think I okay, can without ending it and starting again. Yeah. Maybe <clears throat> let's see if I can do that, or if it'll mess everything up. Mm. I go this. 
over to here. You can see all my notes. I'll minimize those. There we go. Okay, so time on page. And we got number of clicks. Number of clicks on related resources or something like that. Number of clicks on related resources. Okay, and I want to hear why you think those would be good KPIs. Yvonne, why do you think time on page? What does that help us well, measure? Since you cannot really know if people are reading or not, but you can estimate the time that they will take them to read the page. So if it's a certain time, maybe you can assume they read and then they will read. Okay, yeah, so if you, so that gives us, kind of when we combine these together, we're able to see like people spent a while on the page before they clicked, and then they clicked over to the related resources versus if they just kind of went straight through without spending much time. That helps us to see if maybe that was just the quickest way to get there and it wasn't the content that motivated them, but it was just the links that they needed to find. And maybe we need to change our navigation to make it easier for them to find. Carla, did you have a Actually, use of search, the search functionality? Yeah. Search functionality. Let's see if I can add. Uh, okay, I'll make this five and the next one can be six. Search clicks slash searches. Um, why do you think that one? Did the previous version of this site have that search functionality? No. We're, for this example, we're just saying it didn't even have a search functionality, just to make it a little bit more simple. So why, why searches for this particular strategy and hypothesis? Which is, oh, it's too small from here. Um, Users are reading, who are reading about a topic will be more likely to click about resources related to that topic. Um, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't apply. Okay. I, I had it for, I have it for, as a KPI for the previous one, so we still have it and it's still helping us kind of see our big picture. And why did you have a uh, number of clicks on related resources? Uh, because that will help us understand, uh, you know, how many, well, uh, in the navigation, like how many people are clicking away, moving, and trying to find more resources. So understand the behavior uh, better. And, yeah. And uh, can help us look into further strategies, like adding filters and mm. uh, do those kind of things as we go along. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good one to track. Um, I would also add like from topic pages, kind of making, so it's not just all the clicks on the resources, it's the clicks coming specifically from there, so that we're kind of like filtering that data. What else, any, any other KPIs for this one? We can move on to the next one, if not. Bounce rate? Yeah, it's it's sort of like the opposite of this number four, right? It's um, how many people, we're looking at how many people are clicking through as well as just how many people are leaving. Um, and that can provide a little bit more because they could, some people might be going through this topic page to another topic page and they're just on kind of an informational journey. Uh, some people are going down this page and then just leaving, which kind of tells us that maybe their journey wasn't completed, maybe what they came to the site to do, they didn't end up getting to do for some reason. Um, and then people who are clicking on the related resources, that is what we want them to do, um, at least for this particular strategy. And that's saying basically people that came in, they read about this, this topic, and then they found a resource that was related to it and took download that resource and went on their way to go use it. I think if you combine it with a time on page KPI as well, like if someone's clicking there really quick, if they're spending a very short amount of time and then leaving, clearly they didn't find what they want. If they're spending a longer amount of time on like subsequent pages, you can maybe intuit that they're reading and doing that exploration. So I think that those two together would pair up nicely. Yeah. 
Yeah, so with, with these three KPIs, we have kind of a, a nice little picture of what users are doing. Each one on their own tells us something, but it also leaves a lot of, um, a lot of questions around like what else could have caused that. So this is where we're giving this balanced picture by having these three different KPIs to, to all bring it together. Um, and then ultimately the goal will be for us to take this data and see if this hypothesis is true or not and maybe ultimately rewrite it uh, based on what the data say, says to what, what we really think is happening. Because even if it's mostly true, it might not be exact, we might not be exactly right with what we predicted. So it, it'll help us to say yes or no to this and hopefully create an even better, more accurate hypothesis after that. All right, the next goal is to engage users from key regions. And we don't have to pick what regions, we're just keeping it general for this. Uh, so one strategy is to get staff from those key regions to write content. Now I would like to hear a hypothesis. What do we think is going to happen when we do that? Is it so that users from that key region would relate more to the, the topic because it's specific to where they're from? That's, that's a good one. That's kind of what I, one thing yeah. that I was thinking. I'm sure you have a more eloquent way to. No, that's pretty similar that, yeah. to what I have in my notes, actually. Users from region will relate more to locally written content, we can yeah, say. Yeah, that's totally what I said. Um, <laughs> or it could be that. So there, there's even like a couple, couple of things within that. So we're saying maybe that these. these um, local staff have a better knowledge of what people are looking for and they really know that region's um, interests so they're able to write more compelling content or it could be that people see their their favorite person writing content that they know and they want to read it because it's there's name recognition there could be multiple reasons uh, leading to that but basically we're where our hypothesis is either one of those reasons or kind of a combo, maybe a couple of them. Um, did anyone else have any other hypotheses here? Yeah. Um, can you go back to the first column? The goal. So, I mean, Let me get I guess this format flipping shape. It, when you say regions, it's geographical regions. Geographical regions, yeah. Can you, is that big enough to see a little bigger? How's that? Sorry, I would have it in the presentation mode, but I want people to be able to, I want to be able to write on it. So hopefully that doesn't mess up my screen recording. I guess flipping it, it would also keep the staff more engaged, but I don't know if that's necessarily, because you look at users, but I mean, we're thinking about the full picture here. Not only is it external users, but about internal, like would they be more engaged as well if they have a piece of ownership in the content? That's great. Yeah, so you're giving us a new goal here. So staff will be more engaged um, more engaged in developing and marketing content and really that's that's actually so you'll see that this is always an iterative process that's really a hypothesis I think yeah. and our goal is just like increased staff engagement so we want the goal to be more broad and then we can talk about so this is the same strategy here. <clears throat> Get staff from key regions to write content. So it, it's able to work in, in multiple ways, yeah. Okay. Carla, you had something you were about to say? In between bites. Um, that by engaging staff from the regions, the hypothesis would be that more people would come to the site be, and, and from the regions that because the content is relevant to their local situation. Yeah. And it will resonate with them more because it's more applicable content. to their lives. Yeah, 
I'm going to add that to the first one because I think that that goes well with that. Content will be more relevant to local situation. Yep. One KPI can be uh, which are the most engaged regions. Okay, engagement by region, and how are we defining engagement here? Uh, like th that can be well, that, that, that itself can be multiple actually. Yeah, I'm pushing you purposely yeah, a little yeah, bit here. The time spent, of course, are they sharing more content? Or, I mean, they can be uh, multiple of them. Yeah, I'll throw in scroll depth. And increase scroll visits. Depth. Those regions. Increase, increase visits. visits. Comments. Yeah. Uh, you know, engagement is can come in many forms. Uh, yep. Which are the ones which are getting maximum uh, number of comments? Yep. Comments by region. If we're able to, that can be. So some of what happens when we do this, we come up with like, okay, comments by region, but where are those comments coming in from? If they're on social media, we might not be able to say where all those people are from. We might not have access to that. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm, when you said engagement by region, I push you to say, define that engagement. Let's break that out and see what that's gonna look like. And this allows us to come up with uh, basically troubleshoot if we can figure out how to track comments by region well what else can we do what else can we um, what's gonna kind of answer that same question and then we're able to find new data um, come up with our plan early on so that we're not at the end of the project trying to figure out how do we put together this story of what happened um, but we have it from the beginning any other KPIs for this one before we move down to the next goal? Or we could actually do a second strategy here. I've got another line here too. I just I have a question yeah. kind of throughout this. So like for sure. the strategy for that, get staff from key regions. At this point, is that where you start thinking through, well, how do we get staff to do this thing that we want them to do? Does that become a strategy to the strategy? Mm. Like how far in depth do you go for yeah. each of these things? Yeah, that's like that's like another tab in this, uh, maybe. Um, that is helpful and I think is interesting. Usually w the way I have it, I keep it a little bit more high level here and I'm usually working with uh, maybe a content strategist and a UX researcher and maybe a developer, maybe a designer, a few different people from around this kind of cross-functional agile team and asking them, what's your strategy for this? And there are times where they come in and they're like, oh, uh, I don't know exactly, you know, or they're kind of like, they come up, they give me a KPI when I'm asking them for a strategy. Oh, we want more engagement. Okay, well, what's your strategy? You know, so I spend a lot of time actually just defining what these words mean to me uh, because people will say, well, the goal is sessions. Okay, but what, why do we want sessions? You know, um, so defining those words first and then, yeah, they might, they, we might have like an offline meeting, whoever the person who is like the, the comms lead for the project maybe, um, we might have an offline meeting to go into like, what really is your strategy for this strategy? How are you gonna get staff from key regions to write content? And that will potentially kind of come into my KPIs, but what I'm looking to get out of this in the long run maybe I'm writing an annual report a year later and I can come back and say like, we saw all of these things go up and it comes back to our strategy to get staff from the key regions to write content. So I don't need to exactly know all the finer details, but I need to have enough of those like building blocks in place so that I can tell the story. Because that's my job at the end is to tell the story, not necessarily to be the one like making all of those things happen, but I need to understand it well enough that I can, I can tell it. Okay, any, do we wanna add any more KPIs here? Or how about a second strategy for engaging users from key regions besides this one? Does anyone have another strategy that they might use to engage those users in key regions? Do we have any marketing professionals in the building? I don't know if this throws it to, but like, asking for their feedback 
as to what they actually want. Mm, okay. Ask um, people in pop-up feedback like on the website or some other way, but pretty much finding out what their needs are. For input and create content. I'm assuming we're going to like follow up on that and create content um, based on feedback. Yeah? Yeah, that's a cool strategy. Um, and so you'll see the hypothesis is sort of like the bridge between the strategy and the KPIs. Um, sometimes it seems a little bit obvious, but what are we hypothesizing will happen when we ask people in key regions for their input and create content based on their <coughs> feedback? What do we think that's going to do? Why is that a good idea? If you give people what they're asking for, they're more likely to, <laughs> to read it. Okay, yeah, people, people will be more likely to read content that they ask for, hopefully. Um, it, there's sort of two assumptions there too. It will be more in line with their interests and they have ownership as well. So I think it's sort of like, regardless of what they say, because they participated in the survey, you've already got kind of their foot in the door, your, your foot in the door, whichever foot in the door. And so that gives them some ownership of this content. And then because it's aligned with their, in line with their interests, they told you what they're looking for, you wrote about it, hopefully that will help you too. We're getting a little bit too big for this slide. Um, what is a KPI to measure? if that is happening or not. Return traffic. Return traffic from key regions. Yeah, are those people coming back? Um, that's a good, a good yes. start. Amount of people that provide feedback. Number of people that provide feedback. Number of people Perfect. who give feedback. What does that tell us? that people feel invested enough to want to even give you feedback and then yeah. just ignore the Yeah. I think that's good. Kind of measures like the community that you've built and if you if you have some engagement with your audience. Just growth of traffic period from a region. Overall traffic growth in key regions. Yeah, that kind of, so we'll see, I like to think of metrics in sometimes in two categories. There's some that kind of give us a foundation, um, like overall traffic growth, just kind of sets the foundation of here's overall what's happening. Doesn't really tell us if it was because we asked for their input or not, uh, but it just sets the landscape. And then we have some more specific ones, like people who give feedback, and in this case, I would probably want to get maybe one more that's more specific to help kind of crystallize this picture because right now it's a little bit blurry for me still. Yeah. Not sure how to like eloquently word this, but how, okay. how many like article topics we've, we've written on that came from feedback? Oh, yeah. Number of, I use the term UGC, which is user generated content, um, UGC posts. I'll just say user generated posts. Yeah, just like how much have we published of this user generated content? Like based on what on the feedback that they gave. Right. Yeah. Feedback. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and there may be some other there might be some like inverse uh, KPIs we would want to look at here to kind of rule out other things. <clears throat> and to be able to compare. So we might say something around the number of con, like compare it to our average piece of content and look at the engagement we get for the user generated content versus just the average content so that we can kind of weigh that out and see if we're on par or if this is really worth it or not. Um, if we're just getting the same amount as we do for every other piece of content we put out, then it's probably not worth it. So would you 
do like A-B testing or how, how would you? A-B testing is the most scientific way to do it, yeah. Um, I find that that's not always the most realistic. So sometimes you're just testing two things at the same time, uh, which is technically not statistically significant, but still can give you a lot of good insights uh, where you're putting out, and, and really there you're looking at, making sure you're looking at big enough groups of data so that you're able to weed out like the flukes and the, the spikes and the things that just kind of are random. Um, but yeah, A-B testing would be like the best way if you're able to, to pull that off. Anything else? We're actually almost at time, right? 156, yeah. So we're almost at time um, and I want to give folks a chance to ask any other questions. Um, let me turn off the subtitles real quick. Gonna be that on my side. Okay, so this is my contact information. You can get in touch with me on email or LinkedIn. Nick.pistone at pixel.com. Look me up on LinkedIn, it's just Nick Pistone. Um, and I will send you a copy of my template, which I had linked on a different version of this, but I forgot to link it to this version. Um, I've got some business cards here too. I just got these made, so I'd love to use some of them. So <laughs> if anyone wants some, you can throw them out after you leave. What's but. the KPI? How many, how many did you distribute? <laughs> oh yeah, what, if I was successful or not for yeah, this yeah, talk, exactly. you mean? Well, for the, for the cards. How many did you it distribute? It could be an exit ticket. You, have, you oh, can only leave once you true, take the cards. Oh, true, true, you can't get out? Yeah. That's, that's a good strategy. We did that, that's a teaching <laughs> technique, yeah. Um, yeah, the KPIs for for the talk, uh, for the card, you mean? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I think the KPI would be like how much, I would measure the number that I gave out yeah. and the number out of, and the number of people that were here. So it's like a funnel. So there's like number of people here, number of cards given out, and then number of actual like contacts that I received, people that reached out to me on one of these different ways. And then I'd have to break that out on like LinkedIn, email, you know? <laughs> and that would tell my story of like, how many people felt engaged enough. And then of course I have to compare that to all the other presenters and if they got like very many people take their cards or not. So yeah, KPIs. How it's many pieces of candy did you eat a day? Like when too you were many, out? too many. Okay. Probably probably at least ten a day, I would well, guess. I don't know. Because that chart it wouldn't have taken you very long. You know, like erase half of the tick marks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was doing a lot of erasing. Um, it was like multiple pages on the chart. I was like going through it all. I was a pretty nerdy kid, uh, <laughs> as you probably could tell from this presentation. But, but yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, thank, you. thank you. I've got more candy and business cards. You can take both, <laughs> or just one, but you can't take both. <laughs> I'll take a card. Okay. You have to have more in your hands. You're right. After I told everyone they have to take some. All right. No candy. No candy. Sorry. Oh man, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find some kids to give this candy to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just the card. Okay. All right. Thank you. Trick treat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great stuff.